Hi 253, this is our second video for talking about section 7.3 when we're doing trig substitution. So in this video let's start out by considering uh, integrals where there is an expression that looks something like this. So this a squared plus x squared. Remember in the last video uh, we talked about the other one, the a squared minus x squared. So now we're continuing with a new expression. So when we see an expression like this in our integral and we can't do any of the other options like a u substitution or integration by parts or something, uh, we could consider doing the following uh, substitution. So in, when we have this form appearing here, again remember addition is commutative so you might also see this written as x squared plus a squared, right? So that would be the same thing. Uh, then when we have that kind of a situation, we want to go ahead and do the following substitution. We want to let x equal a tangent theta. And let's see why that might be a good substitution to make. Again, it's going to come down to making use of the Pythagorean identity at some point. So when we have a squared plus x squared, that means we're going to have a squared plus this x squared is replaced with a squared tan squared theta and because the a squareds can be factored out and left with a squared times 1 plus tan squared theta the Pythagorean identity allows the 1 plus tan squared theta to be replaced with secant squared theta and so again just like before we have replaced the operation of addition in that expression with an equivalent expression but now one that only makes use of multiplication here and then some powers on a and secant. So again whenever there are powers acting on this sum here a substitution will allow those powers to act individually on each of these uh, these factors here uh, moving across the multiplication where with the addition it would have been stuck because the power can't move across the addition. So let's try an example. So in this example, notice that we actually do have a situation where it says something squared plus something squared, uh, but it's not exactly a squared plus x squared. It's almost there, uh, but not quite. So let me get my uh, my pen here for us. So let's see if we can manipulate this uh, inside the radical here so it looks a little bit more like what we might want to think about making a substitution on. Oops, not equals. That's totally wrong. There we go. The eraser is pretty cool. Okay, so we have 16 plus 4x squared. So if we instead write this as, uh, this is what, 4 squared plus 4x squared is actually a perfect square also, it's 2x squared, right? So what that means is we actually do have this written as a squared plus something squared. It's not x squared because I know there's already a variable of x there, right? But we do have something squared, right? Uh, so what that means is we can go ahead and make use of the trig substitution where we're going to make use of a tangent, but we just have to be careful about what we say the x is, right? Okay, so it's not going to be that x is equal to uh, uh, here it would be 4 for a, right? It, it's not going to be x is equal to 4 tan theta. We have to say the stuff here that was actually squared is equal to 4 tan theta. Okay, so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to let 2x equal 4 tan theta. And that's a 4 again. i got to work on my 4s. The last 4 was also kind of tricky. So if we have a 2x is equal to 4 tan theta, because that's the, the thing that's in the position being squared over here, right? So if 2x is equal to 4 tan theta, then that means that x is equal to what? Uh, 2 tan theta when I divide both sides by 2. Okay, and when I've made that choice, again, I'm going to have to replace all the x's, so that means I have to replace the dx as well. So that means here that dx is equal to 2, what, secant squared theta d theta. Okay, let's go ahead and start making our replacements. So dx is 2 secant squared theta d theta over the square root. Okay, so now remember we saw just on the previous slide that uh, the inside stuff actually simplifies down really, really, really nicely, right? Uh, we just need to be a little bit careful here because we have uh, this issue of a 16 and the 4x squared. So let's just work it out carefully here. Uh, so we've got 16 plus uh, what happens with this 4x squared? So remember, uh, that's really 2x squared, right? 2x, the parentheses, squared, right? And we know 2x is 4 tan theta. So what that really means is this is 4 tan theta. Ooh, those 4s. Ooh, those 4s are giving me trouble. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. All right, I'm going to get the 4 this time. Okay, 4. Ha, yes. 4 tan theta squared.
Okay, because remember that 2x is 4 tan theta, and we know that it's 2x, the quantity squared that's actually living right there. Okay, so let's continue working this out. So I've got 2 secant squared theta d theta here in the numerator. In the denominator, notice this is going to be the square root of uh, what? This is 16 plus 16 tan squared theta. Okay, but the 16 can be factored out just like on the previous slide. So we're left with 16 times 1 plus tan squared theta. I'm really just outlining the steps we did on the previous slide uh, showing the Pythagorean identity here. So we've got 2 secant squared theta d theta over what is this going to be? The square root of 16 1 plus tan squared theta is what? That is secant squared theta and now we can continue simplifying, right? So now we've got 2 secant squared theta d theta over uh, what have we got? 4 secant theta Okay, and again, um, because of how the uh, the thetas are defined here when we're thinking about inverse functions, I didn't write it explicitly, but thinking about the inverse functions here, we're again on restricted domains, so we know that this secant is going to be positive, which means it comes out of the radical already positive, no absolute value needed. Okay, we can continue and simplify this, however. The 2 and the 4 can come out front as a 1 half, and the secants can simplify, so we're just left with 1 half secant theta d theta. Okay, so our work here uh, actually in 7.2, uh, we have we will have arrived at a formula for secant of theta. I'll be showing that to you uh, in class when we finish 7.2. So uh, using that formula uh, for secant of theta, I can actually directly uh, make use of it and figure out and write the uh, antiderivative for secant of theta here. So when I write the antiderivative of secant of theta, I write ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta absolute value and of course plus a constant of integration since we're dealing with an indefinite integral here. Uh, if you don't believe me that that's the formula for the integral of secant, the antiderivative of secant, uh, look up in, pay, in uh, section 7.2 about halfway through the section. It's in a box uh, and you can confirm that there. Okay, so let's continue on here. So um, it looks like we might be done. I've written an equal sign to suggest that maybe we're not done. Uh, usually this is where you stopped. The problem is your antiderivative here for this function, this, this original integral here, uh, is written in terms of theta. But your original expression is in terms of x. And there's a little bit of a discord here because your antiderivative should be in the same variable as your original problem. So what that means is we need to rewrite this expression here that's given in terms of x's. And it's currently in terms of thetas. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because really what we need to do is say, well, if I know that tangent of theta is something, I have to rewrite it so that I know what secant of theta is. So this is where we make use of a little bit of uh, geometry using a right triangle. So notice that if we know here in this sort of area up here, this expression right here tells us some really important information. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down here so that I have somewhere to work with it. So if I know that x is equal to 2 tan theta, doesn't that tell me then that x over 2 is equal to tangent of theta? Yes, but really remember tangent of theta is what? Opposite over adjacent. So if I draw myself a little right triangle over here, pretend that's a right triangle, and I put theta down here as that angle, then tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And that x is really terrible. You're going to have to forgive me this time. There we go. Okay. So that means this has got to be x, this has to be 2. Okay, so if I know tangent of theta is x over 2, then do I know what secant of theta is? Well, secant of theta, remember, that's 1 over cosine, right? Secant of theta is 1 over cosine. And so if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that means that secant is what? Hypotenuse over adjacent, right? Using our trig, uh, our trig rules here with reciprocal identities. So that means I need hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, I don't know the hypotenuse of this right triangle, but we can figure it out. That's just an easy application of the Pythagorean theorem. So that means this is the square root of 4 plus x squared. Oh, that is just terrible. Oh, I know you're going to give me, you're going to give me slack about this when you see me on Thursday, aren't you? About all of these terrible fours. That's okay. I deserve it. Okay, so let's see. Let's make it nice. Square root 4, there we go, plus x squared. 
Aha, there we go. All right, so if secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, that means that we get secant of theta is the square root of 4 plus x squared all over adjacent, all over adjacent, which is 2. Okay, so that means we can start rewriting stuff here. So this is 1 half ln absolute value. What is secant of theta? Square root 4 plus x squared all over 2 plus tangent of theta. Do we know what tangent of theta is? Yep, that's x over 2. Close the absolute values plus c. We now have our final answer. This is our final answer. That, in general, is the antiderivative of that function there. Whew. So, this in general is what you're going to have to do making use of this little right triangle down here to figure out what some of the values of the trig functions are for that angle of theta. When you have another trig function ending up, or trig expression ending up down here in the ending uh, for your antiderivative, you're going to have to rewrite it so everything is in terms of x. Okay, let's consider our last form. So for integrals containing x squared minus a squared here, we need to let x equal a secant theta. And let's see why. So if we start out with x squared minus a squared, remember this is different than a squared minus x squared. They're different, right? So we have to do a different trick substitution. So if we have x squared minus a squared, then when we make a substitution here of x equals a secant theta, we get a squared secant squared theta minus a squared. Again, Pythagorean identities tell us that this is a squared tan squared theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, consider an example. So in this, inter in this integral, notice that underneath the radical, we have an x squared minus a squared situation. Again, a, trig or a u substitution is not going to be appropriate here because we don't have the ability to create an x when we do a u substitution. We would have u equals this and then a generating an x, but there's not an x in the rest of the, uh, the integrand here. This x cubed down here is not going to help us with that. So what we should do now is think about doing a trig substitution. And since we are actually this x squared minus uh, 100, then that means we should do what kind of substitution? We should make use of secant, just like we talked about a second ago. So here in this case, a is 10, right, because it's x squared minus 10 squared. So I should do x equals 10 secant theta. And so since this is x equals 10 secant theta, then dx is equal to what? 10, what's the derivative of secant? Secant tangent d theta. Okay, so let's start making some replacements here. Uh, by the way, there's this restriction on the value of x here just to make sure that what is underneath this radical is in fact positive, right? That's why we have that restriction there. All right, let's start uh, replacing stuff. So dx is 10 secant theta tan theta d theta all over, okay, x to the third. So that's uh, what? Uh, 10 secant theta to the third. So 10 secant theta to the third square root. Now remember what happens with the x squared minus a squared in this situation. Remember that simplified down to what? Uh, a squared tan squared theta. If you don't remember that, back up in the video if you uh, maybe a couple minutes and check it out. So x squared minus a squared simplifies down to a squared tan squared theta. So that means this simplifies down to 100 tan squared theta. Again, if you need to confirm that and work out the actual substitution, pause the video and do so. So let's uh, see if we can uh, cancel some stuff here, because it looks like we got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, so uh, let's see, we got 10, uh, oops, not 10. So we've got 10 secant theta, tan theta, d theta, all over, what is this? This is... Uh, 1,000 secant cubed theta. Uh, and again, because of how we've defined uh, this x and theta relationship here, and because of the implied domains and how the, what the thetas are going to be allowed to be, this tangent's going to come out uh, and be positive with no absolute value necessary, and square root of 100 is 10. So this is times 10 tan theta. All right, let's go ahead and cancel some stuff now. So those tens are gone, right? The 1,000 can come out front, so that's 1 over 1,000 integral and let's see so we've got this 10 gone with this 10 we've got this tangent gone with this tangent that's good and secant over secant cubed that's looking better so that's 1 over uh, secant squared theta d theta uh, but we know that secant is 1 over cosine so this is 1 over a thousand integral cosine squared theta d theta 
And remember, we know what to do with that. That's an even power of cosine, so we make use of the half angle formula here. So this is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. All right, so what have we got here? We've got 1 over 2,000, because that 2 can come out front. And then we just have to do the integral of what? 1 plus cosine 2 theta, okay, with respect to theta. So this is theta plus sine 2 theta over 2, just like we did on one of our previous ones, plus c. Okay, now again, it's really tempting to think we're done at this part, but we're not, because our answer here is in terms of theta, and our original integral is in terms of the variable x. And the two variables should match, right? Your beginning variable should match your ending variable here. So we need to rewrite this final answer in terms of our x's. Remember what we did last time? So we had to reinterpret uh, what we have up here in terms of the relationship between x and theta so that we can replace this stuff down here. So let's see if we can draw our little triangle like we had before. So uh, let's see, what does this mean right here, this relationship? It means we have x over 10 is equal to secant theta, right? Okay, so let's draw our little triangle. So what does that mean for our little triangle here? Okay, let's put a little theta right here. So secant, remember, is 1 over cosine, uh, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means this is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that means this is hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, and we can figure out the missing side over here just in case we need it. For example, if we need to talk about sine of theta or sine of something, we might need opposite over hypotenuse, so we better figure out this third side. Making use of the Pythagorean theorem, we can see that this is going to be what? The square root of x squared minus 100. It's no coincidence that that's exactly what appears here, right? That's not a coincidence. Just like on the previous example, the expression we got here for the hypotenuse was the expression that was found in the actual integrand itself, right? That's not that's not a mistake. That's That doesn't happen by coincidence. That happens because we're making use of the Pythagorean identity a couple of times here, okay? So let's see. Uh, let's figure out if we can actually make a replacement here. So we've got 1 over 2,000 uh, times. Well, this is tricky. Let's see. This isn't asking me for actually the value of a trig function for theta. This is asking me for just plain old theta. So how can I write what theta is in terms of x? Let's see. How would I write what theta is in terms of x? Wait a minute. I know that x over 10 is equal to secant theta. So doesn't that mean theta is equal to secant inverse of x over 10? Yes, or you can make use of any of the other trig functions you like. Because we have this triangle defined here, you could, for example, make use of tangent. So you could say theta is equal to tan inverse of, what do we do, opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent, you could make use of that. Uh, so square root of x squared minus 100 uh, all over 10. Right? So you've got kind of some options here. There are advantages to using uh, tan inverse over secant inverse for like domain reasons and things like that. Uh, so just for fun, let's make use of uh, tangent inverse uh, here because tangent's kind of um, better behaved, I believe. So let's make use of this uh, theta is tan inverse. So then theta right there is going to be tan inverse of square root x squared minus 100 all over 10. Plus, this is what? Uh, I need 1 half sine 2 theta. Well, wait a minute. I only have a triangle talking about theta. I don't have a triangle talking about 2 theta. Oh boy. But wait a minute. I think we actually can rewrite this value of sine 2 theta so it talks about angle measures of theta instead of angle measures of 2 theta. This is making use of the double angle formula, yes? Remember that sine of 2 theta is what? 2 sine theta cosine theta, right? So that means this is really uh, replacing with 2 sine theta cosine theta right here, but there's a 2 down here already. So that's just sine theta cosine theta, right? And actually, I will not write that right there because that's going to be where my value, my expression for x goes in, right? So let me rewrite it actually up here, right? This thing right here is actually uh, sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so let's replace what is written right there with sine theta cosine theta. And we know what sine of theta is because we have our triangle here to reference. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is the square root of x squared minus 100 over opposite over hypotenuse, over x times, oh my goodness, what do we have here? So let's see, cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse. Close the bracket. 
plus C. Whew. Okay, have we got everybody handled? Let's make sure we've got all of the parts put together. Yes, you could distribute the 2000 through if you like to make it look a little bit nicer, but that's everybody in terms of X and all of the trig functions entered and we're good. Uh, so when we are in class together, we will work on a few more examples. What I'd like you to actually try for Thursday is the following problem. Get this one started for Thursday and we'll be working on it together in class on Thursday. If uh, we're not meeting on Thursday, if this is another class listening to this video, I apologize. <laughs> this is referencing uh, my class. So start this one for when we meet to discuss uh, section 7.3. And by the way, if you would like a little bit of extra credit, uh, if you uh, prove for me this uh, integral here, this definition of the integral, the antiderivative of secant theta. Uh, if you do that one, uh, proving it to me, uh, I'll give you some extra credit. So uh, prove to me the uh, antiderivative of secant of theta. Prove this formula here uh, and give it to me by Friday and I'll give you some extra credit. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs>